Hello, dear DSC candidates. Welcome back to my Grammar for Success channel. I am Koresh Babu, a retired lecturer in English from Hyderabad. In today's video, I am going to teach you about uh, certain very important uh, vocabulary aspects from which one or two questions are guaranteed in your TET or DSC examination. I therefore request all of you to watch this video till the end without skipping it in the middle. I also request all of you to consider subscribing to my channel and also sharing this video with all your near and dear ones. Thank you so much and now let's get into the video. Homonyms. What are the homonyms? Homophones and homographs. These two types of words together are called homonyms. Homonyms means homophones and homographs. Okay. And uh, already you have known about uh, the antonyms and synonyms. Antonyms means opposite words. Synonyms means words having identical meaning. Okay. From these homophones and homographs, uh, you are going to get one or two questions. And that's why please pay a very good attention uh, to the uh, concept of these words. Okay. Right. What are the homophones? Homophones means what? So, you, if you look at this word, there are two syllables in this homo and phones. Let us divide this word into syllables. Homo and phones. Right. And uh, uh, what do you mean by homo? Homo always means uh, same. And phone means what? Phone means uh, spoken. That is the meaning. That means, uh, in other words, uh, spoken. Homophone means then spoken in the same way. That is the meaning of this homophone. The word itself has got some meaning in that. Homophone means uh, spoken in the same way. That means again, okay, what is that? Uh, spoken in the same way means what? Uh, and pronounce it in the, uh, in the same way or having the same way. Let me say having the same same pronunciation what is that having the same pronunciation if they if the words have same pronunciation what happens they are spoken the same way the words are being spoken in the same way means they are having the same pronunciation so that is the meaning of this that's why the word itself homophone uh, has uh, the clear meaning okay that's why you need not worry about that and now let us see the definition of this homophone what is that uh, homophones are the words having the same pronunciation but different meaning and different uh, spelling how let us look at uh, some examples uh, sun is there sun sun and sun sun means you know very well my elder son is in the USA, right? And sun is there. Sun is what? The sun rises in the east. That is the sun. And here weak is there. Because of a viral fever, I have become very weak now. Okay. Weak means that is that. Weak means seven days make a week. Okay. That is that week. And you go to the next set of words. Sea and sea. Sea is there. The Arabian Sea. Okay. The Lakshadweep are located in the Arabian Sea. Sea is that. We have several seas. Black seas. Mediterranean seas. Sea, Caspian Sea. There are so many seas, you know, right. And sea is there. Can you see this very clearly? Can you see? See, that is that sea. And here two is there. Two and two. Two means, okay, we need two more players for this uh, uh, match, right. And two, this is too much. Okay, it is too bad. Sometimes you make use of this two very frequently like that. And uh, that is that. And you know, buy and buy. Buy means what? I am going to buy a new cell phone today by and by is there yes the man was killed by a tiger by a tiger okay air air these are the okay, two words see these are all giving the same they are being pronounced in the same way but uh, they are having different meaning and different spelling okay right air air so same pronunciation okay two two weak weak sun sun see see bye bye so here, air, air is there. Air means, means the movement of air. The air in uh, uh, New Delhi is very much polluted. You know that very well. Air is there. I am the heir to this property. Air means one who inherits uh, father's property is called an heir. Air, you know, air, air, you know that very well. And here, steel, steel. And the, another uh, set of words is there. Okay. Steel means the, the body of this uh, uh, cooler is made of steel. The body of the car is made of steel. Steel. And this steel, that is this. Steel, steel means what? Don't try to steal my purse. Beware of the pickpockets. They might steal your purse. Steal. Steal. And break, break. Break means what? Breaking into pieces. 
don't break the law if you break the law you will be arrested you will be punished okay and break is there okay when uh, there is a heavy traffic on the road you must apply the brakes brakes you know that word. see the spelling spelling is different and the meaning is also different but the pronunciation that means uh, pronouncing the words is the same such words are called homophones right and now let's move on to learn about the homographs okay one important note is there what is that note words having the same pronunciation and the same spelling but different meanings are also called homophones this is very important words having same pronunciation right and same spelling right but different meanings are also called homophones don't get confused please words having same pronunciation but uh, different spelling different meanings are called homophones and words having same pronunciation but, and uh, same spelling but different meanings are, are also called uh, uh, homophones how let us look at some examples right is there right means right side you know that very well i need not write all these things right means correct you are absolutely right your answer is right right means correct right means right side see the spelling of these two words is the same the uh, pronunciation of these words is also the same spelling same pronunciation same but meaning is that is different right means right side right means correct and well means all right and one more word is there well is there a deep hole in the earth with water at the bottom well you know very well well means all right how are you i am well how are you doing i am doing well well is there well means all right and well means what there is a big well in our village well sweet water well and here these these two words are being pronounced alike and having the same uh, spelling but giving different meanings uh, this is the point you have to understand here and here fair is there fair means honest and reasonable she is a fair girl she is a he is a fair man fair in dealings fair means very honest okay fair is used in that way fair means a weekly market we have a fair every monday in our village right fair means a weekly market that is called santa and the lean lean means thin is there lean he is a lean chap how is that boy sir he is somewhat lean lean means very slim and uh, 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 lean okay thin and all that so lean means thin that's a, lean means to rest against something so if you rest against something and stand sometimes you know we uh, rest our body against some wall some pole and stand that is called leaning origi nilabaduta oruguta something like that in telugu so here lean means sanna naina bakka naina that is the telugu meaning so if you look at all these examples in all these examples you find the pronunciation of these words is the same the spelling of the words is the same but the meaning is a uh, different and even these words are also called homophones please keep this point in your mind and now let's move on to learn about uh, homographs second one homographs is there now you are going to learn about uh, homographs what are the homographs let us divide this word into syllables homographs there are two syllables in that homo homo means same and graphs means what graph means uh, written phone means spoken that's why it's a phone telephone and graph means written telegraph telegraph message telegraph means written message telegraph paragraph telegraph graph graph means written that means uh, you know uh, written in the same way the meaning of this is written in the same way written in the same way means what yes written in the same way means words written are having let me say having same spelling okay written in the same way same spelling spelling is the same but a different meaning and different uh, pronunciation okay they are written in the same way means they are having same spelling that is the meaning so right how let us look at the definition here note words having same spelling but different meaning and different pronunciation are called uh, homographs what is that words having same spelling but different meaning and different pronunciation how let us look at uh, some examples uh, here tear is there tear means what a drop of water that comes from the uh, from the ice that or comes from the 
ఐస్ సో దట్ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఎ డ్రాప్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ కన్నీటి బిందువు సో కన్నీటి చుక్క సంథింగ్ లైక్ దట్ ఇట్స్ ఎ టియర్ ఓకే యూ హ్యావ్ ఎ టియర్ దిస్ ఇస్ ద ఫోన్ టెక్ ట్రాన్స్క్రిప్షన్ టియర్ అండ్ హియర్ దిస్ ఇస్ ద టేర్ టేర్ మీన్స్ వాట్ టు రిప్ ఆర్ టు రెండ్ ఇఫ్ a tiger comes across you it will never leave you it will rip you into pieces it will tear you into pieces chilchi veita chilchita that is the meaning of this uh, word tear this is tear this is tear same spelling okay same spelling but different meaning different uh, uh, pronunciation you go to the next one that's a base base lowest female uh, singing voice is called base uh something like, that comes from the uh, from the bottom of the throat uh so omkaram how do you say oh so that comes from the bottom of your throat that is called base base see the phonetic tra- transcription base okay here same spelling this is bass this is base this is bass bass means what a fresh water fish a fish that is grown or uh, in the uh, in the fresh water or in the uh, rivers that is called a fresh water fish okay right this is base this is bass okay tear tear please and you go to the third one here uh, wind is there wind same spelling wind 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 a movement of air wind this is wind wind means a movement of air everybody knows that but uh, wind is there wind means to uh, to twist or to twirl what do you do when uh, the watch stops you know you wind it you give don't say key i am giving key to the watch you don't say key but you are winding the watch you wind the watch in the old and good old days there used to be some watches hmt watches or some other watches you have to give key or uh, you have to wind it uh, every day every day morning otherwise it it wouldn't uh, it can say work that was the system but nowadays everything is okay this watch is there it will keep on working and working and working okay till battery is exhausted okay this is wind a movement of air wind that means to twist or to twirl and uh, one more example i have given you this is sow so means the what do the farmers do after tilling the land they sow the seeds they sow the seeds so this is so see the phonetic transcription so to plant seeds in the ground and this is so this is so this is so so means what an adult female pig an adult female pig you know that very well that's why you know this is called so this is so this is so okay this is wind wind base das tear tear see in this way if you look at these words you find the same spelling in these words but they have different meaning and different pronunciation such words are called homographs please keep these two kinds of words in your mind what are they homophones and homographs they are together called homonyms okay homonyms means what homophones and homographs there okay now let's move on to learn other uh, important words second one acronyms and allophones this is also a very important uh, uh, vocabulary aspect from your uh, dsc or tet examination point of view okay what are the acronyms acronyms means abbreviations pronounced like words okay there are certain pron- uh, abbreviations you cannot pronounce them as words okay okay for example ma is there do you say ma no mla is there then you say mla or something like that no mp is there will you say that mbbs is there will you say uh, will you call it mbs something like that you cannot call these abbreviations uh, like uh, like words okay uh, that is not possible but there are certain uh, abbreviations which we can call as words okay right what are they for example i have your nato you cannot say nato you say nato unesco you are pronouncing it as a word who world health organization neat mset unesco see if you look at all these abbreviations you are they are abbreviations but you are pronouncing them as as if they are words okay as if they are words so actually you have to say he is an ma student you you abbreviation is to be read separately ma mla mbbs mp rmp something like that. okay here that is there and uh, these are called such abbreviations 
pronounced like words are called acronyms okay and you go uh, to learn about the allophones what are the allophones uh, allophones are the different pronunciations or sounds of the same phoneme are called allophones so you know very well we have 26 letters but we have 44 uh, sounds and these sounds are called phonemes these sounds are called what for sounds are called phonemes of these 24 are called uh, consonantal sounds uh, 20 are called uh, vowel sounds of these you know of these 20 uh, 12 are called uh, original vowel sounds but 8 are uh, diphthongs all this matter uh, you know very well so in this way we have 26 letters only but we have 44 sounds and these sounds are called phonemes and when one phoneme gives uh, two different sounds uh, then they are called allophones here i have given you some examples to make you understand uh, love fool so in this you know l is there l is there in these two words l is there but in the first word yeah, yeah, no see la you are pronouncing it as la but here l la l same l but uh, in this word it is giving you the sound of la and in this the sound it is giving the sound of l so these are called the phonemes of l and here next uh, pin is there and spin is there in this you know it is uh, being pronounced pin p p p p when you uh, bring the lips together you can pronounce that letter p and here you see spin spin with some amount of breath you have to pronounce it spin pin spin same p here it is giving pins the pass sound it is giving f sound spin so these are the phonemes of p and similarly what is that uh, cut is there center is there in this word c is uh, c has the sound of ka but in this uh, the uh, this c this phoneme has uh, the sound of uh, sa cut center same c it is in this word it is giving the ka sound it is giving the sa sound so they are called the phonemes of c and one more example i think i have given you uh, chance in this you know ch this phoneme is giving uh, the sound of cha and in this the same phoneme is giving the sound of uh, ka chance and chemical so these are the phonemes of ch i hope you have understood these two important aspects uh, uh, that are mentioned on this slide acronyms means abbreviations pronounced like words allophones means uh, different uh, sounds of the fo same phoneme are called uh, allophones here in these examples you have seen that and uh, now let's move on to learn other things third one hypernyms and hyponyms so you please try to understand these two kinds of uh, uh, words okay hypernyms means what a hypernym indicates a broader term okay while a hyponym indicates a more specific term please try to understand this one a hypernym indicates a broader term okay a hyponym indicates a more specific one how i'll give you i have given very beautiful examples cutlery is there cutlery includes all the items uh, with which uh, you, you cut the food and eat okay so that is called cutlery cutlery is a uh, wholesale word or a broader term and that is a hypernym okay it's a broader term because it includes what let me say uh, this uh, cutlery includes all the implements uh, used for cutting e and eating food uh, like a chopstick okay fork knife spoon tablespoon teaspoon etc all these words will constitute what cutlery all these implements make cutlery okay cutlery is a word you know broader word that is therefore called a hypernym and here fork is there what is this this is only a hyponym knife what a hyponym spoon a hyponym tablespoon a hyponym and here you see that you know spoon is what a hyponym Cutlery is a hypernym, it's a broader word and more specific word is spoon, it's a hyponym, chopstick is a hyponym and a teaspoon is a hyponym, something like that. Hope you have understood that. The broader word is called a hypernym and the uh, specific word is called a hyponym. One more example here I would like to give you, dog is a hypernym, dog, dog, there are varieties of dogs several dog is a hypernym okay and here's a dog stands for all varieties of dogs like alsatian doberman hutch labrador rottweiler german shepherd bulldog cocker a spaniel shetland sheepdog say i have gathered all these names uh, from internet only in order to help you understand uh, i have brought all these things uh, from various sources okay uh, and dog means all these are dogs but here this dog stands for all these things. Alsatian is a dog, Doberman is a dog, Hutch is a dog, Labrador is a dog. These are all dogs. But here, this Labrador is there. What is this? This is a hyponym. 
Okay, and here you see that Hutch is what? A hyponym. Dog is a hypernym. Hutch is a hyponym because hypernym indicates the broader name given to that. Hyponym indicates the specific name given to that. Hutch is the specific name. Dog is a broader name. That is the point you have to understand. And similarly, what vehicle is there? Vehicle means bus is a vehicle, lorry is a vehicle, all these things. Are there. So, it is a hypernym. And then, uh, what is that? Uh, bicycle is what? A hyponym. Similarly, river is there. River is a hypernym and uh, the Krishna, the Godavari, these are all hyponyms. Tree is there. Tree is a hypernym. And uh, banyan tree, name tree, these are all specific uh, names of the trees. So, in this way, a vehicle is a hypernym, a bicycle is a hyponym. Please try to understand these uh, words and uh, uh, hope I have made it clear to you with these examples. Okay. Now, what you have understood from this slide is hypernym means broader name given to that particular object or particular thing and uh, uh, hyponym means the specific word or specific name given to that uh, term. Okay. And now, let us move on to learn other important things. Word accent or word stress. This is also a very important aspect uh, from your DS and TET uh, examinations point of view. And that is why I have mentioned some most important rules here. Okay. Stress uh, words ending in ION. This is a suffix. Have the primary accent on the syllable preceding the suffix. From the suffix, uh, what is the preceding syllable? That syllable receives uh, the accent. Accent uh, is marked uh, like this. This is the accent. Uh, this is the mark. Lagu Guruvulu, you know that very well. Lagu, Guru, something like that. Lagu and Guru, something, you know, uh, in, in prosody in Telugu, you have learnt all those things. And in the English language also, whichever the word syllable receives the accent, that is, you have to mark it like that. That is called accent. And uh, let us see that here. Uh, uh, what is that? I O N. See, the suffix is in this. So, if you want to uh, 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 use the stress correctly, what you have to do is you have to cut the word into uh, syllables. So that is very, very important. And here, application is there. Application. So, in this, uh, uh, the suffix is there. What is the syllable preceding the suffix means? This is only that. So, that is why you have to use the what uh, the stress mark on that. Application. How to pronounce it? How application, right. So, civilization is there. But you cut the word into civil, uh, syllables. Civilization. So, uh, where is the uh, suffix in this syllable? What is the uh, um, uh, syllable preceding the suffix? This one. So, it receives the, uh, what is that? This receives the uh, accent. Okay. You have to say civilization. So, something like that. Composition. Okay. Composition. So, cut the word into syllable. Composition. Where is this uh, suffix in this uh, syllable? So, what is the uh, um, syllable preceding the suffix? Z. So, that is why on this you have to use this uh, uh, stress mark or accent. Composition. Composition. Converse, conversation is there. So, in this there is uh, the suffix. The syllable preceding the suffix is sa. Therefore, conversation. Conversation, right. And here you see cultivation, cultivation. This is the syllable preceding this suffix, therefore, on this. Imagination on this. So, you, you can understand all of them. Determination, examination. So, in all these words, you know, you find them very clearly. Introduction, qualification, okay. Qualification, I think this is wrong, okay. Qualification, typographical mistake is here. Okay, here you see in this way, let me read these words uh, once again uh, to make you understand uh, the, the importance of stress. Application, civilization, composition, conversation, cultivation, imagination, determination, examination, introduction, qualification. So, this is how the Britishers and the Westerners pronounce these words. And you go to the next slide. Okay. Words ending in ik or ikal or ikali uh, have the primary accent on the syllable preceding the suffix. Preceding the suffix. Let us look at certain important words. Apologetic. So, the ik is there. It is in this syllable. Okay. 
apologetic is the word. So, where is the uh, suffix in the last syllable? What is the syllable preceding the suffix means? This is that. So, on this you have to give the stress. Apologetic like that. Patriotic. Patriotic. So, first of all you have to learn how to uh, cut the word into syllables. Just as you do in Telugu. Telugu also, in Telugu also you can do that. So, pa, tree, o, tick. Very simple you can use it. So, wh wh where is the suffix in this? What is the uh, syllable preceding this suffix? So, there patriotic like that. And you go to the next one. Gram, ma, t, kal. Gram, ma, t, kal. So, here you see that you know, equal words, equal, where is this suffix, in this syllable, in this syllable, okay, in this and in this, in these two syllables, this uh, uh, suffix is there and therefore, what is the syllable preceding the suffix means, this one only, therefore, grammatical, scientific, so in this ik is there, okay, therefore, the syllable preceding the suffix is t, that is why scientific, scientific, electric, again, ik word is there, this is the second word preceding the syllable preceding the suffix a electrical so equal is there okay. the suffix is in this syllable and in this syllable therefore what is the uh, syllable preceding the suffix means this one only therefore it's a electrical electrical right and the next uh, um, again uh, equal is there there's a word uh, with equal political so in this and in this, in these two uh, syllables, this suffix is there. So, what is the pre uh, syllable preceding the suffix means? This one only. Therefore, political. What should you say? Political, right. And here, the equally is there. Equally. So, where is this equally? Politically means politically. Okay. Yes. Uh, in these three syllables, this suffix is there. And therefore, what is the syllable preceding the suffix means only this? That's why you have to say politically. Politically, you have to say that and you go to the next one, sympathetic. So, ik again, ik word is given. So, what is the syllable preceding the suffix means? Again, the simple when sympathetically, ikali is there, ikali is the word. So, uh, where to use the uh, stress then means, ikali is there, e in this syllable, in this syllable, in this syllable. In this c three syllables, uh, this ikali is there, this suffix is there. Therefore, what is the uh, syllables preceding the suffix means only this one. That's why I say sympathetically, sympathetically. So, you have to say that. Now, let's move on to learn other things. Third one is there. Words ending in it are accented uh, on the syllable preceding the suffix. That is on the third syllable from the end or anti-penultimate syllable, whatever you can say that. And here you see that activity. It is there. It is the suffix. Where is the uh, suffix? In this syllable, in this syllable, okay. So, what is the uh, syllable preceding the suffix means? Only this one. Therefore, act activity, activity, you have to say activity, right. And here, curiosity is there, okay. It is in this and in this, uh, in these two syllables. Uh, therefore, what should be the uh, sub syllable preceding the suffix means? This one. You have to say curiosity, curiosity. You generally say curiosity. We, we pronounce it uh, in flatly, okay, flatly we pronounce the curiosity, something. But uh, in the Western, con uh, Western countries, people don't do that. Curiosity. If you just say that, you know, it has got its own glamour, its own beauty and all that, okay. They say, we say mother, father, simply we speak them uh, flatly. But uh, they say mother, my mother, my father, they stress it. My mother is at home. My father is not at home. Father, mother. So whenever you pronounce the words like that, you know, it, uh, the, the language uh, uh, gets its own charm, its own glamour, its own beauty. Okay, it's all right. And uh, you see that uh, uh, it is uh, there. Electricity is there. It is. This uh, prefix is in this and in, this two, in these two syllables. And what should be the uh, um, syllable preceding the suffix means? Only this one. Electricity. 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 Right. Probability. So, we pronounce the word probability flatly. But here, where is the suffix in this syllable and in this syllable, right? And what is the uh, syllable preceding the suffix means B. So, what should you say? Probability, probability, ability, probability, something like that. Okay. And equality is there. Okay. Uh, ET, uh, the suffix is in these two syllables. Therefore, what is the uh, syllable preceding the suffix means? Qua. Equality equality right 
and uh, generosity. So, it is in these two syllables, the, the preceding one is raw. Generosity. This was given sometime in the DS examination. Generosity. Okay. Whether the in the examination what happens, you no, know, he will give the uh, question like this. Choose the uh, correctly accented word, correctly stressed word. Sometimes is here. Next time what happens, he gives like this. Jene, ra, si, ne, third one, this one. Okay. Generosity or generosity or okay. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, he will give like next one. Jene, ra, si, <laughs> t is there. So, generosity, 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 generosity. So, stress mark is getting changed. And the fourth one is given like this. Genera. So, it is given. Generosity, 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 something like that. So, he will confuse you with uh, the stress mark. And if you know the rule, because this is a word ending in it, it, it is a suffix. What is the rule of this suffix? It, this is the rule. The Syllable preceding the suffix will get the stress mark or will get accent. So, if you know this rule, you need not worry about this. This was given sometime in the DS examination. Okay. So, uh, that will be changed. Okay, right. Uh, now, let us move on to other examples. Morality. So, morality. Ne se city. So, you can understand that. Originality. So that's why he says on the third syllable from the end. Directly he has said on the third syllable from the end. One, two, three, third one. One, two, three, third. One, two, three, third. One, two, three, third. One, two, three, third. Directly he has said on the third syllable from the end. Don't worry about that. If you don't understand the syllable preceding the suffix, then you don't. So, but you have to divide the word into syllables. That's very, very important. Right. And now let's move on to the uh, next uh, slide. Fourth one words ending in IL or IL. ILE have the uh, primary accent on the syllable preceding the suffix. And again, uh, with these two suffixes also, the same is the rule. Uh, the uh, accent is uh, received by the syllable preceding the suffix. Okay, right. And uh, artificial. So, IAL, EL is there. Where, where is this EL? In this and in this, in these two syllables. What is the syllable preceding the suffix means? That's, that's why you have to say artificial. Ceremonial, ceremonial, operation, ni. IL is in these two syllables. So, what is the syllable preceding the suffix mean? Mo. Therefore, you say ceremonial. What do you say? Ceremonial, right. And here, confidential. Again, IAL. In these two uh, syllables, the uh, suffix is there. So, the Syllable preceding the suffix is den. Therefore, you say confidential. Right. ILE. Confidentially is there. So, here ILE. ILE is there in this syllable, in this syllable, and in, in these three syllables, uh, this ILE is there. This suffix is in these three syllables. Just I in this, AL in this syllable, LE in this syllable. So, what is the uh, syllable preceding the suffix means den. That's why confidentially. That's why you be, you know. Uh, thorough with the rule and then you can use the stress mark correctly right confidentially confidential confidentially so essential so in these two syllables uh, uh, the suffix is there and the uh, um, syllable preceding them then that's why essential and essentially is there again I A L. so in these three syllables uh, this uh, suffix is there so therefore this is the syllable preceding the suffix therefore you say essentially right and uh, industrial again this one Pre presidential in this you know here you can automatically understand that very interesting and official okay memorial so in in these three two syllables in these two syllables okay in these two syllables so, so like this. Very simple, very easy. If you follow this rule, you can easily understand this. Right. And now let's move on to the next one. Fifth one. In words more than two syllables uh, ending in eight, the primary accent is placed at two syllables before the suffix. That is on the third syllable from that. So, words ending in eight. 
words ending in 8 having more than 2 syllables. It must end in 8, but it should have more than 2 syllables. That is the condition. Then what happens now? The, the stress mark is used on the third syllable direct. No problem at all. Here you see, complicate, complicate. You have cut the word into syllables 3. So what is the third one? No, on, on the third syllable, what is the third? 1, 2, 3, third syllable. Complicate. Cultivate is there. 1, 2, 3. Cultivate. Easy. Easy. We, eight words, these are all. Educate. Edu educate. You have to say. Educate. Don't say. Edu educate. Don't say like that. Educate. Fortunate. Okay. Separate. Adjective. Separate. Separate. In my verb also, the, in the same way, it is pronounced. Separate. Separate. It is an adjective. It is a verb. Okay. And uh, uh, you go to the next rule. Words ending in ion. I-A-N. I-N. This is a beautiful suffix. Okay. Accented on the syllable preceding the suffix. Uh, we can say the, the syllable that is preceding the suffix will receive the uh, stress mark. Okay. Uh, stress. Electrician. Okay. Uh, I-A-N is in this syllable and in this syllable. That is why these two are gone. What is the uh, syllable preceding the suffix means? Three. So, you say electrician. It's an electrician, you don't. Electrician. See, see, try to pronounce them, you find the beauty in them. Okay. Electrician. So, suffix is in these two syllables. So, what is the preceding syllable? It means bra. Librarian. Librarian. And then comes musician. Okay. So, here, musician. Politician. So, so if you follow the rule, you can easily understand what I have done in this. Uh, uh, slide and now let us move on to the uh, next rule. Seventh one words ending in ios are accented on the syllable preceding the suffix. Again, preceding the suffix, syllable preceding the suffix, syllable preceding in almost all these rules, uh, the uh, um, accent uh, is given on, uh, on the syllable preceding the suffix. Okay, here ios words are then anxious, industrious. See, ios are in these two syllables, therefore, what is the sub, uh, syllable preceding the suffix? Means and anxious you have to say ang anxious anxious you cannot say anxious okay industrious in these two uh, syllables you find the suffix and therefore this is the uh, syllable preceding the suffix industrious right and injurious laborious okay luxurious rebellious okay beautiful victorious the suffixes al ali affect the action shell pattern. Okay. And the next one is there accident. Okay. Accidental. So here al when it is you no know, accident, when al is added to that you know accidental, then what is happening? The uh, uh, syllable preceding the suffix is receiving this. But in the ordinary accident, you no, know, it is receiving you know at the beginning, accident you say. Okay, but uh, when it gets this uh, suffix, uh, what happens? Uh, it is uh, uh, getting the stress uh, on the uh, syllable preceding the suffix, uh, accidental. Here, accident, accidental. Similarly, what is that? Uh, accidentally, autumn. Okay, in the, uh, in this word, autumn. And here you see, uh, when it becomes, uh, when you add this uh, al, then autumnally. Here, only uh, the uh, syllable preceding the suffix only receiving that original. Okay, beginning 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 but here original 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 because al this one is added and therefore uh, preceding the syllable okay original okay so in this way al and ali these suffixes uh, affect the accentual pattern means at the beginning it will have uh, a different uh, stress pattern and uh, when it is uh, when al is added to that and ali is added to these words you know uh, the stress pattern is slightly changing okay and with this the video comes to an end thank you so much for watching this video hello dear tech and dsc candidates thank you so much for watching this video uh, if you have any problem in understanding any of these uh, uh, topics please uh, mention it in the comment section with another beautiful video i shall be back to you until then bye see you all of you